Boom shagalaka, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, in today's episode, I answer the question, what is a commissionary? I think being a commissionary is key to finishing the Great Commission. So uh, my buddy Justin Eves brought me on to his weekly show. Uh, unfortunately, the video recording didn't come out the best, so you just get to see my, uh, my beautiful face and his face in the video. But all right, let's jump into this uh, episode. My name is R.K. Castillo. I'm part of a group of followers of Jesus who have said yes to the Great Commission and the Greatness Commission. The Barna Research Group found that 51% of Christians have no idea what the Great Commission is. We will change that. We believe in finishing the Great Commission by reaching every person with the good news of the Kingdom of God and discipling all the nations. We do this by living the Greatness Commission every day. We serve, we love God, and we love people. We believe that every follower of Jesus is called to demonstrate the greatness of God through signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. The works of the ministry are no longer just for the pastor or the professional preacher. Every follower of Jesus is called to do the works of the ministry. We can no longer just sit on the pew or in the chair in the church. My job is to empower and equip you to do great things with and for God. I am a commissionary, and these are some strategies for you to be one too. Hey, what's going on? As always, I want to continue just sharing, um, telling the stories, you know, sharing about where I've come from, what God's taken me through, um, just sharing about my past, you know, just remembering about the good things that God has done. So uh, before we get started today, um, I'm going to share a little story. Um, so most of you already know who uh, my buddy RK is. Um, I think majority of you have heard him share at church. Uh, you become familiar with him. Uh, RK is somebody who uh, I met when I was only 20 years old. Uh, I'd say it was probably at the start of my journey. Um, I was a Christian already at the time, but um, it was uh, the start of just God just opening up uh, my eyes to what is available. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about me and RK when we first met. Uh, most of you probably already know this, but I'm going to share it anyways. So uh, back when we first met, um, man, the thing I loved about RK is uh, him and I were both in a place of we were just hungry. Uh, we are hungry to be used by God. Uh, we are hungry to just get a pray for people. Um, neither one of us really had experienced crazy miracles or healings, any of that stuff. But we we had been reading about it. We knew about it. You know, we knew what scripture said. And so, uh, man, we were just gung-ho. I remember we got to Brazil and it was just like, man, for some reason, uh, we, we, we got just focused on fuego, which is fire. Uh, fire God. I mean, him and I even joking around would look at people and be like, fuego, you know, fire, get him, God. Um, we really just wanted God's presence to fall. And so uh, in Brazil was uh, for me, man, when I just had my my world rocked, um, getting to see uh, healings take place. You've heard RK tell the story about the little boy we prayed for in the wheelchair um, how he walked afterwards, you know, uh, times of, uh, you know, I remember times when we just didn't even have time to, to pray or to know what they needed prayer for. And we were just get them God, get them God. And people would just get healed, get touched. Uh, <laughs> and one of my favorite stories that we always talk about is, uh, when we prayed for this woman in a park and she had like a white outfit on. And, uh, I remember we prayed for her and man, presence of God just fell, right? Just boom, lit her up. And uh, she falls down in the mud. And I remember people are like, thinking, dude, she's in the mud. And I'm even thinking like, oh, man, this lady's white dress. And, uh, you know, after she gets up, uh, me and our care, like, you know, touching her back, you know, as we're praying for her. And we're like, dude, like not a single drop of mud on her. I mean, just crazy God encounters, um, seeing people get saved, seeing people get healed. And that's that's really that's where our, our relationship, our foundation as friends was was built on was um, just something that could never, um, you know, just be changed, man. Just crazy, like, you know, him and I, our foundation was built on God. We just both wanted God to move. And we didn't care about the breaking breaks and all the strongman stuff. We just wanted to see people, you know, healed and set free. So that's all we cared about was the praying afterwards, man, just getting to pray for people. So I've known this guy since I was 20. 
and I'm 40 now. So 20 years. Um, even after that, when he stayed traveling the world and I came home and became a youth pastor, he would come and he would stay at my house for weeks at a time and hang out with the youth group. You know, he got to invest in people's lives like Katie and different people. You know, he would come and just be part of what God was doing here at Desert Streams Church. So I love this guy. Um, he's one of the reasons why uh, the missions field opened back up for Desert Streams. When I told him I wanted to start doing missions again, he happened to just to be at my house one day and he just looks at me and he's like, yo, let's go to India. And I said, let's do it, man. I mean, within months, we're taking a team to India. So come on, man. So I'm excited um, to get to have him share today. Listen, guys, I want you to come ready to receive because I believe what RK brings to the table is powerful, man. I know this guy's been all over the world. He's got crazy stories. He's, you know, been everywhere, experienced God move in a mighty way. And so I'm going to give him the uh, opportunity just to have at it today. So come on, man, let's come and let's get what God has. I'm going to patch him through right now. And pray that he has service, <laughs> that he has service, because uh, I know he's in a park probably right now. What's going on? Hey, 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 man, what's happening? Living the dream out here, living the dad life. Yeah. Kids playing in the park. Well, I'm excited to get to have you on. I know you've been, you know, in all these crazy long Zoom meetings, four hour Zoom meetings. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, man, I had a four hour long Zoom meeting today. It was ridiculous. Got one tomorrow and one the next day again. I don't know who yeah. decides to have four hour meetings, but it shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that even after being all Zoomed out, you're still willing to hop on and share with us. So, uh, man, I'm just going to give it over to you and, uh, you know, have at it, bro. Man, so uh, you guys see Justin's shirt, rocking the commissionary shirt. No, I, I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, what is a commissionary. A, a, commission, a commissionary, it's a term that I made up because I was thinking about, I was thinking about two things. The first is the Great Commission. Um, did you know that uh, the Barnard Research Group, they did, a, they did a study and they found out that 51% of Christians have no idea what the Great Commission is. It just, I mean, that just blew my mind. It's like, it's like the last thing that Jesus said before he left is, is, uh, <laughs> is the Great Commission. And so it's like, imagine it's like you have one last conversation you can have with people, and so you're going to decide that this is probably the uh, the important thing to say. Uh, it's it's what we call the Great Commission, right? And so I couldn't believe that. Basically, one out of two people, if you go ask them, "Hey, do you know what the Great Commission is?" They they'll say, "I have I don't know what that is." You know, so the Great Commission has two parts. The first part is uh, the first part of the Great Commission is the Mark Great Commission, Mark 16, where Jesus says. Um, the gospel should be preached to every single person on the planet, to all creatures, right? That's the first part of the Great Commission. It's preaching to everyone. In Matthew, Jesus says the Great Commission is to disciple or to teach all the nations. So it's the two hands of the, of, of the Great Commission. On one side is preach to every single person on the planet, the good news of the kingdom of God. And the other side is we need to disciple all nations. So not just make disciples in nations, but make disciples of nations. And, and, um, and so as followers of Jesus, when you signed up to be a part of Jesus's family, you signed up to do those two things, preach the gospel to everyone and disciple all the nations. It's, it's a dream of God that, that, uh, that's the family dream. It's the family business. This is what we're called to be a part of is the great commission. But so as I began to ask God about, about, well, how do, how do we, um, how do we do the great commission? How do we, how do we, uh, find our place in God's plan to reach everyone and disciple all the nations? I started to do a, another study. Uh, I call it the greatness commission because, because Jesus says, he said only a few things about half a dozen things. He said, look, if you do this, you'll be great. And, um, and so a commissionary is someone who says yes to the Great Commission and yes to the Greatness Commission. So I just wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, a few of the things in the Greatness Commission. So who here remembers, if you can, in the chat, give me a couple, a couple uh, instances where Jesus says, look, if you do this, you'll be called great in the kingdom. Because 
the 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 great commission is about saying yes to to reaching all and discipling all the nations not just making disciples but discipling nations right so it's also about saying yes to the, the greatness commission so mm. levi got one of them let's see what else you guys can come up with Je jesus says if you want to be great you need to be the greatest servant servant in the uh in the world are you servant of all there you go there you go oh everyone's getting the servant one <laughs> <laughs> anything else anything else all right so what do you guys think it means oh. hey there we go the, the next one is 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 to if you want to be great you got to become like a child mm -hmm. right so let's talk about this first one the the greatest in the kingdom is the one who is the servant you know, especially in our in our Western worldview, it's it's easy to want to be the person who's being served. You know, you want you want to become famous. You want to have the most YouTube uh, subscribers. You want to have the most um, <laughs> likes on your Facebook videos and whatever the heck they call it on Instagram. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you want to have the greatest account. But you, know, Jesus says, the one who is the greatest in the kingdom is the one who's a servant. So think about this, the God of the universe, before any, anything was ever created, you got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit sitting there in, in perfect unity, right? And then they want to make a family that can show the world what, what their relationship is like. And so they create Adam and Eve, they put him in a garden. And uh, you guys know the story, people royally screwed everything up. And they said, you know what? We need to do something to make the world right again. So the son says, you know what? I'll go down. I'll become a man and I'll show them what you're like, father. And ultimately, he'll pay a price to deal with the problem that man made on the planet. Right? So think about this. God of the universe. If there's anyone who could have come down and said, look, I'm God. Every single one of you should bow down and worship me and, and serve me and do what I say. Instead, this guy... The night before he's going to go and lay down his life, he goes and he picks up a towel and he washes people's feet. You know, it's like it blows your mind when you think about how good God is. Like he acted totally different than the rulers uh, around him. Right. He acted totally different than, than the religious people thought he was going to act like. Right. They all they all assumed that the Messiah was going to come and was going to destroy all the Romans and set up a, an earthly kingdom. And instead he comes and he he uh, he washes people's feet. He 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 grabs the poor and he makes them a part of his family. The the lepers who no one no one would ever touch, he embraces them and releases healing. Right? He he gets prostitutes and he and he sees them transform. I mean, I mean, he was this amazing servant God. So first thing, if you want to be great in the kingdom, don't expect to be served, but grab up your towel and begin to serve people who who the world says look they're dirty, they're forgotten. You can leave those guys alone. Right? Oh, that's, good. that's the first thing second thing he says if you want to be great in the kingdom you got to become like this child man i don't know if you guys have ever been around kids but he i think he's saying don't be childish so i remember justin used to pick up kids and he would throw them at me you know <laughs> and um and I, I remember we went we went in a hot tub once and the kids brought ice cream and they begin to have an ice cream war inside of the hot tub throwing ice cream at each other and <laughs> so it's it's not being it's not being childish it's becoming childlike and um and when you're childlike you trust the father man my kids dream you know i remember i came home one day and my daughter was nine at the time and she was she was crying on the couch and so i i asked my wife I said what's wrong with her and she said she said um she just found out that there's more slaves now than have ever existed in history. And um, she was, she was reading about the, the um, emancipation of slavery, but she found out that there's more slaves nowadays than there ever were in history. And they're all, they're all trapped in the sex industry. And um, so she's just weeping just at the realization that slaves still exist today. And um, she comes, she comes into my office like 10, 15 minutes later. And she says, dad, I'm going to end slavery. And I'm thinking, man, 
God, I got something to learn from my daughter. She's nine years old, believing that <laughs> one of the greatest sins that exists right now, slavery can be eradicated and she's going to do it. Like, that's the type of heart that we need to have, man. We need to, to have a heart that believes God, trusts God, and just trusts that what he says is true. You know, like, I tell my kids stories and they just trust me. Like, I call them to do something and they'll go do it. It's like, it's what being childlike um, is, you know, it's like, man, we need to have a childlike heart that just trusts and believes and goes after big things, right? Wow. And, um, man, I would love to see this in our churches. You know, kids, they don't receive a junior Holy Spirit when they get saved. Mm. Man, you know, like so many times we put them in the back and we just expect them to, to, uh, to just play with toys and, and don't, don't disrupt the service, <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking, man, what would it be like if we believed that kids get the same Holy Spirit, same power of God, same grace of God that we have if we release kids to do the work of the, uh, the kingdom? Man, we could see God do, do some amazing things through the kids, you know? And, uh, and I don't know. Okay, I'm preaching here, so... Uh, <laughs> So forgive me, but I just I'm just thinking, man, kids are kids are important in the kingdom of God. So much so where Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you gotta become like them. Come on, right? So Amen. another thing that um that Jesus says, uh if you do a study of the word great and greatness in the in the New Testament, Jesus says this, he says, Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and reject you for my name, because great great is your reward in heaven man so saying yes to the greatness commission you you begin to embrace rejection where it's not it's not something to be feared i think so many people are afraid to get out there and talk to people about jesus pray for their friends show the world what god is like because they're afraid of what happens man if they say no what happens if i step out and they reject me and um if you realize something man jesus looks at rejection and he says man i love that he says so much so where he says every single time you get rejected by trying to love someone and reach out for my namesake i will reward you so man i started to embrace rejection realizing that every single time i get rejected it's something that jesus will reward me for in the future right so when jesus says store for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy right he's saying that every single one of you has a have a heavenly bank account that you can make deposits in and and one of the things that will make a deposit in your heavenly bank account is rejection getting out there and getting rejected so man we need to begin to embrace rejection because uh to finish the great commission we have to we have to begin to re embrace rejection so i started i started challenging um, whenever we do trainings i challenge the people in the training i give them a challenge every single i say you have a day by the time i'm, I'm teaching tomorrow you have to go out and get rejected five times and um <laughs> and it's it's funny what happens when people begin to embrace rejection they begin to see God do things that they've never seen before because all of a sudden, instead of being afraid of rejected, they're trying to get rejected and they'll start to see God do things. That's kind of amazing. And I, I think so far the, the, uh, the record for one, one of the people that have gone through our trainings is like 19 rejections in a day. <laughs> so man, if you want to take up the rejection challenge, I don't know how it would work right now when everyone's all locked up in COVID captivity, but man, May you embrace rejection and start to walk it out, man. <laughs> Where you, you're not afraid of rejection, you embrace it, you know, because you're doing something that matters to Jesus. He says, look, these people are trying to reach out and love people, and that matters to me. The people, the, the response of the people isn't up to you. Your response to Jesus and his, his call in your life is what matters, right? So blessed are the rejected. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen, amen. All right. So next thing that, G that Jesus said, he says, he says, blessed are you who 
not only know the commands of Jesus, he says, you're blessed. You'll be called great if you know and if you teach people to obey the commands of Jesus. Man, isn't that crazy? So if you look at the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Jesus says, disciple nations by teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, right? So if you're going to say yes to the Greatness Commission, you need to live in the red letters of Jesus and look at those things where Jesus says, look, do this and don't, or don't do that. And you need to be someone who's not, who not just knows the commands and not just obeying them, but is teaching others to do the same thing. So it's why I created the, the red letter devotional because, because starting to ask people, Hey, do you, do you know the things that Jesus commands you to do? It's like blank stares. Like, no, I don't know. I think he, he told me to love people and love God. It's like, yeah, that's it. But do you know, there's like around a hundred things that Jesus told you that you need to do or told you not to do. So, um, so, so, man, live in the red letters. Look at the things where Jesus said, do this and don't do that. So, for example, you know one of the things that Jesus commands you to do is to raise the dead? Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. It's one of my dreams in life to see someone get raised from the dead. Matthew 10, 7, and 8, Jesus commands you to raise the dead. So it's not an option. You need to get out there, and if you're ever around dead people, you need to try to raise them up. <laughs> because if you love me, you'll obey my commands, right? That's what Jesus says. And so we need to know the commands and we need to start to teach them. We need to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, right? We need to, we need to say, man, Jesus, I want to live my life according to what you've called me to do. And the thing that he's called you to do is Live according to the things he told you to do. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> the, the commands of Jesus are is the fa the family value value system, right? It's like this is what God is calling us to do. This is this is what we're supposed to do as a family. This is how we act, and this is how we don't act. You know, like um, with my kids, I say, "Hey, we go do this because we're Castillos, right?" It's like. Our family has a value system that we say, this is how we act as, um, as followers of Jesus. This is how we act as Castillos. Um, so, man, if you obey and teach others to obey the, uh, the commands, that's, that's when you'll be called great in the kingdom. All right. Who can guess the very last one? <laughs> the very last one there's there's one last one um it's probably the most important one we'll see if people can get it can you guess j ho can you guess it all right we're gonna talk about the greatest command of all. Do you guys remember the greatest command of all? If you're going to say yes to the greatness commission, you have to say yes to the greatest command of all. Do you guys remember what it is? <laughs> no, not forward spirit. <laughs> there you go. It's love. He says, he says, this is the greatest, this is the greatest command. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself, right? Did you know that right now God looks at every single person on this planet and he loves them 100% and there's nothing that people can do to change his mind? Come on. And there's, I mean, there's nothing you could do that would make God love you more. I mean... You can't fast more. You can't pray more. You can't worship more. You can't get out there and preach the gospel more. Like you can't go do that stuff to earn the love of God. It's 100% right now. He looks at you and he sees someone that he loves, right. right, man. And when you have a love like that, all of a sudden you receive that love and you begin to uh, give it away. You begin to reflect the love that God has on you to the world. You know, it's like sometimes my son gets mad at me and he starts to yell at me and then he yells, I hate you. And you know what my answer every single time is? Man, son, I love you so much. There's nothing you could do to change my mind about you. 
<laughs> you know why? Because man, I received a love like that from my father in heaven. Man, I got to show that to my kids. You mm -hmm. know, I got to show that to the world. Come on. You know, for the last like almost 10 years, we spent time with a bunch of people in that society, you know, doesn't really love at all. <laughs> you know, the homeless, the dirty, the drug addicts, you know, rejected by society. And we would sit with them and say, man, you know what? You matter to God. He loves you. And there's nothing you can do to change your, his mind about you. Right, man. And to watch the love of God come and transform people's lives. Come on. It's worth it, guys. And so, man, we started to bring pizza down to the homeless every single week. We said, we're going to have dinner with, with the homeless every single week. And so we started to bring pizza. And, um, you know, we figured there's, there's no better way to gather a bunch of homeless people than to give them some food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jesus says you need to eat with people that don't know Jesus. That's actually a command too. And um, so we started, we started to bring dinner and we would eat with people. And um, there was a, there was a lady who started to come around. She was a drug addict. She would, uh, she would, she would prostitute herself to be able to pay for the drugs, you know, and, and she came around and guess what we did? We loved on her, Right. We loved you. He said, look, we, you matter to God and there's nothing you could do to change our mind about you, right? We love you. God loves you. I, eventually, she says, man, I, I think I want to come to church. So she starts coming to church. Then eventually she says, I want to get baptized and give my life to Jesus. Then, you know, in the process, she got off drugs. She stopped prostituting herself. And eventually she says, you know what? I want to get reconnected with, with, our, with my kids. Because she had been, she had, uh, she had two young daughters who she had left because of her drug addiction and whatnot. And um, so she got a job. She was able to save up enough money to fly back to where, to where her kids were and get reconnected with her kids. Why? Because of the love of God, you uh -huh. know. And I mean, I got to be honest, it took, it took a good year and a half, two years for, for the, the love to work its process. But man, there was kids reconnected with their mother and the mother reconnected with her kids because of the love of God, right? Man, um, I had another guy, he, he was homeless. He just called me, he called me yesterday or two days ago, he called me. Um, he had been homeless for, I mean, decades and um, came to Hawaii, you know, full on alcoholic for the last couple decades and um he says, you know what? I need to go to church. So he goes to one of the churches in Waikiki and on the door, it says, if you're wearing shorts, you can't come in here. It's like, what? So, so he's, uh, he's all butthurt, you know, he wants to go to church and he's like, I don't want to go to church anymore. This is stupid. <laughs> you know, like they wanted to let you in because you're, you're not wearing, you're not wearing pants and nice clothes or whatever. So he's like, he's all butthurt walking across the park, going back to the place where he stays. And he comes across us, a group in the park, and starts to listen and goes, oh, they're talking about God. Oh, they're a church, right? So he starts getting involved in our church. And um, we knew he had an alcohol problem. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a secret, <laughs> you know. We knew he was an alcoholic. But you know what? The love of God looks at you and says, I love you. It doesn't matter what you're doing right now. I love you and you can't change that. <laughs> right. And um, so, man, we had that guy, we had him over to our house. We would have him over for dinners. I would go pick him up once a week and we would go hang out and we would work on an aquaponics system. And then I take him to lunch every single Monday. You know what happened? One night he walks into the store to get his alcohol. Like he always got. And all of a sudden he goes, I don't need this anymore. Come on. And one night, set free of alcoholism that he'd had for decades. Why? Because, because the love of God comes in and it just changed him. <laughs> That's right. Come on. You know? And so, yeah. man, if you're going to say yes to the greatness commission, to be a commissionary, you're going to receive the love of God, 
let it transform you so then you begin to reflect the love of God out to the world. And so, man, oh yeah, I got to show you my daughter's shirt. It says, love. <laughs> Tonight's Holy totally Spirit night, so we're going to worship. So she put on her love shirt. Love God, yeah, love people. Thing I oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a quick to see. Right. But yeah, so that's what a commissionary does. A commissionary says yes to the Great Commission, which is to reach all and disciple all the nations. And it says yes to the Greatness Commission, which is a daily discipline where you wake up, you say, I'm going to love God. I'm going to love people today. I'm going to become like a child. I'm going to serve and I'm going to live in the red letters of Jesus. And I'm going to so try to obey them that it begins to be the thing that I teach others to obey as well. Can I get an amen? Amen. Come on. Post up an amen. <laughs> amen. My daughter says, Jesus will set you free of binge watching Netflix. Maybe that's a word of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm done. Should we pray for people, man? Yeah, man. Have at it. Whatever you feel, you got any words of knowledge, any prophetic words, go for it, man. So I wanted you on here. Yeah, man. I, uh, I keep on getting something about a stomach, like um, like feeling nauseated, like a, a stomach issue, um, where where, man, you know, it's like when you when you feel like you're gonna have to th throw up. Does anyone have that thing? Yeah, if you have something like that, or you know who it is, just post in the comments if you know if that's you, or you know someone who's dealing with stomach issue, stomach problem, anything like that. We can pray for it. Yeah, I also I also see um. Like um. All right, we got one. Uh, like a like I like a crossing the eyes. Like your eyes are going like cross-eyed. I don't know if you know someone whose eyes are going cross-eyed. Well, while we wait for that one, man, let's let's pray for this stomach the stomach thing. Right, that's Father, Gina that posted. Speak, it. I want to speak peace into the stomach in Jesus name. I say this, this nausea, this thing that has been um, making it feel like you're gonna throw up. I say no more from this day forward, may I be done like a stake in the ground. No more, I just really healing in the stomach in Jesus name. And I don't know if it's like connected with certain, certain foods you eat. Like I saw, I saw you drinking milk. I don't know if, I don't know if milk makes your stomach feel uh, feel um i don't know gurgly but, <laughs> but may you drink some milk and see that oh it doesn't bother my stomach anymore looks like sandy said me too for stomach yeah come on healing in jesus name in his stomach and the eyes so i like i keep on seeing like a, it's like a it's like a kid i see like a little girl with her eyes going um going cross-eyed so i don't know if you know a girl who, who has like her eyes are going kind of like cockeyed, cross-eyed. So I just speak strength in the eyes in Jesus' name. And um, may your eyes just straighten up. And um, amen. Feel that stomach release in Jesus' name. So I just speak strength in the eyes. May the eyes straighten up. May, uh, may the thing that the doctor said, uh, this can't be reversed. May it be reversed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. No, this is this is an interesting one. I feel like um I feel like during worship, someone here is as is during during worship they've been experiencing something like feeling something and they're not sure if it's uh if it's God or if they're just making it up. Um God is teaching you how to recognize his his presence when it comes into the room and so may you not feel like a weirdo may you realize like that's god that's god showing up in a room in the same way if if the if a king or a a, a president or someone walks in a room how you would stand up in honor man when you feel that thing with, during worship you know i don't know what it is if it's a tingling or if it's like a heat or you kind of feel shaky or whatever it is like when that comes in, 
may you honor God and respect God and say, man, I, I, I welcome you here and just ask for more. Whenever that happens, ask for more. Come on. Looks like and, uh, uh, Robin, look, Robin looks like Robin said that she believes the eyes are for her daughter-in-law. Yeah, come on. Release healing over Robin's daughter-in-law. Straight eyes, strength in her eyes. Jesus' name. You got anything else, Justin? Nah, oh, man. Good, good. Mm. Come on. I think someone else is. Um, you have a, you have a heart like my like my daughter to to see sex trafficking eliminated, and um. And you're wondering, what? How can you make a difference? I think this week God is going to speak to you of how you can make a difference when it comes to sex trafficking. Um, that's something that will, yeah, that's something that will open up this week for you. Come on. Yeah, it's good. This one just popped in my mind too. Since we're waiting, man, I think one of the uh, a, a great example of love and faithfulness is uh, Pastor Gary. And so, man, I don't know if you can reach out to him during this time and just honor him for his love and faithfulness over the years and, um, and just reach out and encourage him if you can during this time to say, man, I appreciate you showing me what love and faithfulness looks like during the season. I think, man, I don't know how he's doing, but I think that would be, I think that would be great if you guys encourage and honor Pastor Gary for what he's been doing. Hmm. Good. Good. Well, anything else before we wrap up, RK? I think that's it, man. Well, man, I appreciate you jumping on. Hey, guys, listen. <clears throat> you see how RK is just flowing in the end here? That's what we call words of knowledge. And I want to tell you guys something. Every single one of you can hear God and experience God the way RK does. On Thursdays, we actually do a thing uh, called Prophetic Zoom where we walk you through how to be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is doing. RK is just tapping into what God's already doing. He's just listening. And uh, you can do the same thing. And in fact, I actually think that goes right along with being a commissionary. Because I believe that as we step into saying, yes, I want to be a commissionary, um, recognizing that we hear God's voice and that we can speak God's words with boldness is one of the tools that God uses to, to do what? To add people to the kingdom, right? To go into all the world, but then also to disciple them. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I love what RK had to teach. Um, I hope that it inspired you guys. It fired you guys up. I hope you guys realize how easy it really is to, to walk out the right commission, right? Especially when he says things like, yo, um, it's okay to uh, be ridiculed in my name, to be persecuted, right? Like it takes the pressure off. So, RK, thanks for that message. I love it. Um, hey, where can people get these t-shirts? I know you have a thing they got to fill out, but um, man, <laughs> trying to give a little plug for you. This t-shirt yeah. says commissionary on it. Um, I know RK has a form because it's one of those things that he's not just going to give out the shirt to anybody. It's for people who are going to live it. If you're willing to say, hey, I want to live that life. I want to answer the call. Uh, he has a yeah. form you got to fill out. If he approves you, you get a shirt. You get to buy a shirt. So uh, a <laughs> I way think to support him. I think it's commissionary.org. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's that. If, if it's not commissionary.org, and there's two M's in it, C-O-M-M-I-S-S-I-O-N-A-R-Y. If it's not commissionary.org, I'll, I'll, 
I'll, I'll shoot you the, the link, Justin. <laughs> and you yeah, can, if you guys want, if you guys are interested, hit me up. I'll get you the link. But uh, yeah, man, love what you're doing, RK. Uh, appreciate you and your family. Can't wait to see what's going to happen when you get over to Paraguay finally. Yeah. Um, to continue to transform Paraguay like you've been doing. Yes. So, uh, man. Amen, amen. Thank you, let brother. Me just, uh, let me pray for you real quick before I, I log you off. Hey, guys, as I pray for RK, if you guys could just agree with me in prayer for him, his family, um, and everything. So, Father God, I thank you for the Castillos. God, I thank you for the call on their life. I thank you for the fruit the abundance of fruit that's already come out. But God, I thank you that it's just the beginning, God, the harvest. Uh, I see, God, that's just, the, that's just the beginning of the harvest. There's such a greater harvest that's waiting because of this family. I thank you for their years of faithfulness and sowing. God, I pray for an increase of blessings, an increase of finances. Um, continue to use them, move in them and through them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Appreciate you, man. Can't All wait right. to get back in that mission field with you. Come on, Jesus. All, All right. right. Talk to you guys later. If you'd like step-by-step -step tools and trainings to help you finish the Great Commission, head over to PurposeConcepts.com where you'll find tons of free resources.